Yes, it's worthwhile to bring up the subject of potentially good cliches. Welcome to my channel, KC, that's me, Kerry Chug, the Sledge Storyteller, here to talk about the wonderful world of storytelling and open up discussion about how we can tell the best stories we can. In this case, talking about potentially good cliches when they're handled right and when they're handled not right. Now, I don't know what I was thinking when I said I was talking about making Halloween videos, then Christmas videos after that. Must have been my personal mentality of gradually getting to Christmas, going into my home earlier in November than most. But I decided a few weeks ago uh, that would be fun to pick up from a previous video topic about potentially good storytelling cliches in superhero movies. So along those lines, I will start with... Now in a previous video, I confess to had made the mistake of using this trope in script writing forum under the assignment of writing a twist ending. And by mistake, I mean it's been done to death as a form of twist ending. Despite its place as a classic, The Wizard of Oz does get a lot of criticism for ending on that note, and it's not a good bet that your story with It Was a Dream at the end will instantly become a timeless classic to that level. Where I believe that it does work somewhere in the middle of the story, it is a tool to give us a feeling of a character's emotions, where it may be more in the safe zone, uh, in a comedy, playing on their fantasies, but it can also work in drama or action to exhibit their fears. The buildup of emotions had better be your goal because you're looking at backlash if your aim is for the audience to hear psych and it's wise to keep it simple as possible. It becomes the most memorable part of your story. You probably fail big time. Now there will be times when a story breaks all the key fundamentals and comes out as so engaging that it still manages to entertain or stimulate your thinking. The ready example is the new Batman Adventures episode, Over the Edge, where Batgirl has a dream of turmoil that comes after she dies. Just know that you either need to be seasoned enough or get struck by sheer brilliance to come through with that. Now, where I've hated use of this trope is when the hero stories have repeated antagonists who are just shady mirror image of themselves. It's a fun trope when used here and there because it stimulates the hero's emotions, fearing that certain of their abilities will be outmatched by the villain, or that the heroes will realize how the opposition's worst trait is found within themselves. But no matter how much variety you put into that and only that, it gets old fast. Your audience will want villains at times who are the hero's polar opposite or have something that compensate for whatever they don't have and the hero does have. I think every hero should have that kind of villain, but variety is just as important. Okay, I've been running my justifications on the physical attributes of this trope in my Batman movie review, so Yes, it's up there with my favorite cliché tropes, when, like any other trope, it's handled correctly. Naturally, the macho hero needs to run into struggles, but even then, if the hero goes through multiple obstacles and it feels like previous ones had no lasting effect on them, they become pointless. They, you know, uh, we should know still later on just how much of a struggle it was and how much of it will wear down on the hero in the course of the story. Also, I think about the more popular tough guys. John Wick had his puppy, B.A. Baracus, the tough guy on the A-team. He often softens up with kids in a non-creepy way. Lou Ferrigno's Hulk had such moments as freeing a rabbit from a trap or putting baby birds back into their nest. Basically, the bigger the machismo, the more they do need a soft side. So this is all about the hero having taken a massive beating or rendered into utter exhaustion before something within them erupts out of nowhere, be it energy or power, 
to land that knockout blow. I'll be honest, it's hard to find any use of this trope where the logic of it is on firm ground and it's not predictable. I remember watching Rocky II for the first time and feeling the sheer nail-biting tension at the climax as Rocky and Apollo are down for the count and in the race to get up before the ref shouts 10, I was at my wits end to see how Rocky was going to manage to get up in time before he finally prevailed to become the heavyweight champion of the world. But in subsequent views, I noticed where Rocky was when the ref counted and I'm thinking, okay, that puts the stakes way high, but just what would that look like with an uninterrupted view of his transitioning to this point? I mean, there has to be a major spontaneous spring from the knees to semi-firm footing in just one second. The trope struggles to reconcile between what a second win you can believe will occur in the average Joe and how much more capacity the more powerful or more athletic hero can find within himself or herself when the stakes are at their peak and those same stakes need to create tension and uncertainty. Sometimes you can make the second win work in a way that's just so awesomely cool that it gets at least most of the audience's minds off the potential logical issues. At times, you can avoid that being a problem by steering clear of the hero's physical limits and having him or her figure out a perfect right move to make with the heroes getting creative with a gadget and or the sudden uh, surrounding the immediately sounding environment. In the end, just think hard on the stakes and predictability to find the right solution. And along similar lines. So basically an unseen and unexpected force that saves the day. Now there will be moments when you can throw all caution to the wind in using this case in point Jurassic Park. The opportunity that Steven Spielberg saw here was that he had perhaps the most beloved dinosaur ever that has resonated with the public for over a century and had who at this point been a threat to everyone so this was a chance for T-Rex to be the big hero. I myself am getting pretty sick of this trope just coming out of pure out of the blue luck. Where I see it working is when we see it spring up from a number of possibilities which is what makes it challenging. Well, what is potentially workable is for several subtly placed items or factors that the audience will readily recognize later that are placed throughout the plot. We'll work at making it realistic enough and not feel too much like it's again out of pure luck. That's my take on other potentially good storytelling cliches. Thank you for watching, agree, disagree, or something I left out. Please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please click like. If you like this channel, please click subscribe or follow me on Instagram. As always, the link to order sledge number one and number two is below in the description there. The link to IndiePlanet.com where you can order just sledge number one on Kindle, both available through digital or paper formats. Sledge number three remains in development. When Tiago showed me this rough sketch cover proposal, that pose and the element of danger just put me over the moon. But let's all look for civility amid all the hate out there, all the bad news about social and political strife. Let's see everybody as a potential friend. Um, there will always be common ground we can find with anybody. But thanks again for watching. Everyone be safe and God bless.